Welcome to TMS Insights. Jeremy Hook and Ben Clark bring you an end of financial year update of what's been a busy market through May and June. Ben, we've had uh, a lot of volatility, a lot of price action, some profit warnings more recently, and um, um, certainly a time where, where things are on the move. Definitely. I mean, um, you know, into May, of course, we saw globally bond yield spike, mm -hmm. um, particularly in Europe and, um, and the US and also locally here in Australia which preceded a pretty aggressive sort of sell-off across the, particularly mm. those more high-yielding stocks in our market. That does seem to have bottomed out now. Telstra and the banks are, are starting to recover. But then confession sessions rapidly followed on from that. And, you know, we have seen a number of companies advising that they won't meet their, um, their full year's earnings guidance. And um, it'll be interesting to see how the reporting season plays out. I, I must say, I, it, it seems every year that mm. a, a small miss in earnings is there's a more and more aggressive reaction to it yeah. in this age of rapid information, CFDs, short selling, algorithmic trading platforms, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's right. And if we, we actually go and address some of these ones that have given a little bit of guidance and it's tending to be a little bit more negative than positive in terms of the companies that we've heard from. But there's a few that we follow and like and let's have a look at them. Let's start maybe with Seek, which gave... Some guidance that uh, the learning division hasn't produced this year and would produce pretty much a flat second half uh, earnings number. Yeah, and look, uh, you know, I think some things you want to worry about a bit more, other yep. things you'll see as more of an opportunity, and Seek is the latter to me, mm. um, in that the edge at Seek um, learning is only, in most analyst valuations, about 50 to 80 cents mm. of their overall valuation of a $15 stock. Mm. So even if that business was worthless today, which it isn't, yeah. then the $2 sort of share price fall would seem uh, as an overreaction. But of course, growth stocks, high PEs, bit of negative yeah. news, you will see an overreaction. That's more short-term volatility, but hopefully better long-term results. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think, Jeremy, like one of the reasons to seek learning's disappointing news is that the TAFE New South Wales computer system has blown up this year. <laughs> they can't get students enrolled because there is no way to do it. Yeah. Um, and you'd hope that that's sort of a one-off factor. Yeah. But certainly a big market reaction, and again, probably reflects on higher PE stocks that have delivered over time do get rated and probably people get a little bit lazy and expect nothing could ever go wrong, which, of course, isn't how business operates. But Seek, you know, down in that 14 to $15 zone looks pretty good. So yeah. uh, another one that reported uh, a slight um, lower expected expected earnings number was uh, Flight Centre, which had performed very well over the last couple of months and then has dived very sharply, uh, no pun intended, on that, on that, uh, <laughs> hit some turbulence. Hit turbulence, yeah. <laughs> so, but Ben, it wasn't a big miss. A slight decline in earnings expected now, four percent. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, you know, uh, earnings forecast was three sixty to three ninety. They yeah. said now it'll be three fifty five to three sixty five. So they could still actually hit their guidance, mm. and yet there's been a twenty odd percent drop in the share price on the back of it, and. You know, I think part of that, again, is high quality growth stock, bit of negative news overreaction. But also yeah. there were some comments in there about a loss of market share during the half. Mm. And that's probably one I'd be a little bit more cautious about adding to it or buying at the moment. Um, I'd probably want to get through to August and, you know, actually hear from Graham Turner exactly what's going on in the business and the industry, where the loss of market share has been and is it a structural sort of change that we're seeing occurring. So... Mm. Um, you know, I think it looks cheap at these prices and it's tempting to pick up a few of those shares, but I'd tend to sit back and just wait and see how that plays out. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, half a billion dollars of net cash on the balance sheet puts them in a very strong position. And when companies' profits only decline for short-term reasons, that's an opportunity. But you just can't, with any of these companies, Flight Centre included, discount longer-term trends which appear in one form or another, in, in half yearly or annual results that lead to bigger trends. And I guess the presence of big online booking.com, Expedia, et cetera, are potentially some sort of impact on earnings, not only short term for Flight Centre, but it is a very well managed business. And I think it's got uh, some value at the uh, sold down levels it's reached. Yeah. And and one of, I can bring up one um, which I quite like the look mm. of at the moment is um, Dulux Group. Um, which is actually very similar to Seek. They're on a end of March financial mm. year, reported their result in May. And 
the, the vast bulk of the business is the paints and the products that they manufacture, and that had a great result. But the garage door business, which is very, very small in, in, in the overall group, had a disappointing result. The share price has come back sort of 12% on the back of that. But, you know, this, this is a business that has a return on equity of nearly 40%. It's mm-hmm. one of the highest in the market. Um, it pays a great dividend yield of about 5.3%, including franking. Mm-hmm. And it's only had one 10% drop in its four-year listed history after being spun out of Orica. And that was a great buying opportunity. And I think if you look at the next five years, the new housing construction activity is going to be very strong. Yeah. Um, Mike Baird's talking about building 400,000 houses, fast tracks in New South Wales. Dulux has 90% of the paint market in Australia. I think that the next five years, them is going to be really good. Mm. And it's a great business just on its own merits. So yeah. that's another one that I, I think looks pretty appealing. One other that came down over the last couple of months um, is REA Group. Now, REA Group hasn't downgraded earnings, but we strongly suspect that the earnings momentum is slowing because of very natural factors. This property market is just too hot, particularly in Sydney and also in Melbourne, for REA to benefit from the listings revenue they might otherwise be getting. Ben, that would normally be seen as an opportunity yep. and has been... Sub a pullback under forty dollars. Yeah, you know this would probably be the premier growth stock in our market in terms of the rate and the consistency of the growth that they've had. And with that, it's come with a, a really pricey price tag, you know. And um, back under or well, around sort of forty dollars, it, it actually trades now on a fairly reasonable PE mm-hmm. for a growth stock. Again, a lot of net cash and no debt, like flight center, yeah, like flight so, center. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I I think. You can understand what's going on in the yeah. business, which is the short-term drag in that um, if you speak to anyone trying to buy a property, particularly in Sydney or Melbourne at the moment, they'll tell you there's just nothing to buy. And that's mainly because the market is so white hot. Yeah. Everyone's either trying to buy before they sell because they're worried about what the yeah. market could do or there's a lot of stuff happening off market. Mm. Uh, agents taking people through places and it's selling within a week and not having to hit the boards. But, you know, these conditions will not last forever. Yeah. And, you know, you'd be surprised if the market doesn't start to taper off in the next six to 12 months. And as that happens, we're all going to have to, you know, advertise a bit harder to sell and get a good result. Mm. And REA's conditions will normalise and, and that growth will start to push through again. So, I, you know, we, I think we yeah. both see this as a really good opportunity. One of the top uh, top stocks on the market, REA, yeah. definitely. Um now, just finally, one very big offer that will affect a lot of clients is Westpac's offer of BT shares. Westpac, like other banks, is having to raise capital to increase their Tier 1 requirements. APRA is guiding them and directing them in that fashion. NAB, we know from May, raised $5 billion for a rights issue. Westpac underwrote its dividend, but is also divesting half of its 60% stake in BT Investment Management. And that presents an opportunity to shareholders in BT and shareholders in Westpac to take up. Now, for shareholders in Westpac, who are numerous amongst the client base, um, it's an opportunity to buy either five or $10,000 of BT shares at $8.20 each. Now, BT's had a phenomenal run, Ben, through the last two years mm-hmm. after the successful Hambro acquisition and the, the value they've created to that business offshore. Um, but at $8.20, it's not exactly cheap. No, it's not. And um, it's got a lot of the things that we would we would look for. Um, I think we both agree that Platinum and Magellan are the the um, the um, the international managers we rather own yeah. equity in as opposed to BT. And I, I, I think, you know, we really probably only want to look at this and rec- we'll recommend it to clients if there's a really big gap between the share price, which is currently about eight seventy. dollars and the offer price at eight twenty because, you know, there's three hundred thousand odd Westpac shareholders out there. If just one in ten sends in their ten dollar, you know, ten thousand dollar check, it's going to be horrendously yeah. scaled back. And we don't want everyone to be left over with one or two thousand dollars of shares that you might make five or six percent on. Or, yeah. or maybe not even that because yep. again, valuation issues do to present yep. themselves. So just watch the email. We'll be advising and being in touch with you. REA recommendation for this one. The offer closes on the 10th of July, so it's not far away now, but it is an offer which will get wide circulation and we'll be looking to advise you on that one. Well, that's all we've got time for for this edition of TMS Insights. We look forward to bringing another edition to you in July.